All right, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Depends on where you're at. It's a beautiful day here in San Dimas, California. Great day for a webinar. Thank you guys for joining us today. We have a great topic uh, that we're going to discuss. My name is Ken Miguel. Uh, here with me today is Michael Lugo, one of our worldwide's top tech support engineers. How are you, Mike? Doing great, Ken. How's everybody out there doing? Great, I hope. Again, this, uh, this webinar is brought to you by Bolite Technology Group with over 20 years experience in the security industry. We pr make, we produce, we offer only the latest and greatest in video surveillance solutions. So in this webinar, uh, we're going to go back and continue our education on IP video and networking. I know this is a, a pretty broad topic. Um, we can go many ways to to uh, present this topic. Today we're going to go over networking basics. Uh, we're going to have an introduction on networking, uh, connecting the dots, meaning how to make all your hardware and software work together as a system, and some tips about IP CCTV networking. Also, uh, IP analytics. So this is a topic that's very underrated. If you guys are looking into using and selling IP systems, you may or may not know one of the differences of this product line is that these cameras are smart in comparison to old gen or even the uh, current gen HD over coax cameras. So um, these are analytics that are built into our cameras in particular, but some of these analytic um, packages, built-in packages may exist in other lines as well. So we're going to talk about the um, analytics, what they do for you, how they benefit your installation, and how you can take full advantage of your IP cameras. Guys, there's a uh, chat box on your screen. This is going to be an open discussion. If you have any questions, go ahead and type it in on that questions box, and me and Mike will answer the questions as we go along with this webinar. So hope you guys, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy and uh, learn a few things from this webinar. So let's go ahead and start. So uh, let's we'll start with ter terminologies. Advanced network configuration. All networks, large or small, require specialized network hardware to make them all work. Every network must have the following. Okay, client, server, network interface, router, or switch. Some networks have advanced hardware and software. So, Mike, what? Uh, some about firewall. What's a firewall? Yes, this is some real important stuff, especially if uh, you guys are not familiar with networks too much. Firewalls um, can be a major headache if there is one on site and you're trying to get these cameras online. So, firewall basically is going to block any uh, connection coming in and from the network. That's exactly what it is. If it sounds like a firewall, it's blocking everything. So if there's a, a, an IT guy on site, if I need his help to better configure that firewall to allow access in and out. Uh, we have a question, what does Bolet offer? As far as, if you're talking about analytics, um, there's built-in analytics on our cameras. So we're going to go over those analytics um, later on this webinar. So good question. Uh, stay tuned. We'll go over that stuff. So firewall is literally a wall that m prevents devices from going in and out you know, without authorization, right? Yeah. Uh, PoE injectors. So PoE injectors, this is another pretty important um, tool to be used in the, in the network environment. Sometimes uh, PoE switches are not always accessible maybe in just one. A lot of POEs on the market are only half and half. Uh, when I say, when I mean that by that is an eight port, four port POE switch. So only four ports are POE, you might need that fifth camera. You don't want to buy a full eight because they are very expensive. If you don't know, POE stands for power over ethernet. Yep, so what that's going to do is allow you to have a data connection and power over one UTP ethernet plug. You know, of course, different 
cameras have different power requirements, so we're going to talk about what you need to buy, depending on what equipment or cameras you want to use. Uh, fiber optic. How does fiber optic uh, kind of tie into all of this? So fiber optic is really important, especially nowadays in, with CCTV and the way network and IP cameras are growing, uh, for two reasons. One, speed. You're going to get the fastest speed possible by using a fiber backbone. The second is distance. You're going to be able to go a lot further than you would typically a, a UTP Cat5 backbone. So fiber on bigger on the bigger scale can be very useful. Okay. Um, power over coax. This applies to upgrades of old, older analog systems that have existing coax infrastructure, right? Yep. And this this is this is big. Especially in the smaller scale, a lot of people are getting away from their older coax, uh, analog CCTV, and they want to go IP. Sometimes those cables are ran in the wall, and you have no access to get them out or get another cable in. So these are very uh, useful and helpful tools. Yeah, so there's a way for you to keep the cabling intact and be able to upgrade them to IP using a specific accessory. Yep. All right, so I'm in a... Uh, Camera installed. I've never done IP, an IP installation before in my life. Right? Um, my computer knowledge mediocre, but I can get I can get by. So what do I need to start? So this is this is very very important because I see every day a lot of customers, um, installers, they'll go out and be like, I'm um, installing this IP system for the first time, and I'm here with the camera system. I got some cable. What do I do? So there's some things you're going to need. For one, you're going to need the proper tools. Make sure you have a CCTV tester. Most cameras nowadays do have a service port, so you can do adjustments. Believe me, it's going to make your day a whole lot easier. BNC service port out of the IP camera. Out of the IP camera. Okay. Oh, uh, those on the cameras. Yep. Um, you're going to need a laptop or a computer. Mandatory. You need one a lot of, we have a lot of installers who not used to the IP system, they're used to the older analog systems, go to the site, it's going to be nearly impossible to try to install an IP system without a, without a computer or a laptop, mandatory. Of course, we talked about every network needs a switch, router, things like that. You're going to need some software that comes with the NVR, the camera. Of course, the system itself, and very important, is your plan of action. Uh, and we'll go over that in a bit. But so these are some of the key things that you are going to need. Networking tools. So I should testers. Yeah, testers. Wire. Networking tools. Very important. Crimpers, um, fish tape. Um, you also want to make sure you have your cable. What is your interface you're going to use? Is it is it coax? You can use a converter. Cat six, cat five. Make sure this is all planned out before you get to the jobs that actually plan out the job. Okay, so now you have the tools. Let's talk about connecting the dots, how to get all this hardware, tools, accessories uh, to work for you. Um, first step, assigning your camera. Yeah, so a static how, IP address. how do we do that? How do we know? I explained a little or talked a little bit about um, preparing your install, knowing, writing everything down. How do you know what IP scheme you're going to use? How do you know what's your gateway, things like that. So, like I said, you're going to need a computer. It's mandatory. Once you get to your computer, you can open up your Windows, and in the command prompt. So you're going to have a, so you, you have your switch plugged to your computer. Yeah, well, it's even before the switch. This is, okay, this is before this, you yeah, turn anything on. Yeah, this is, you turn your computer on, we need to get some information before we start anything. So we turn our computer on, in our command prompt, you can type in IP config. What this is going to do is give us our network schemes that allow us to have access to the network, to the router, which is going to be our gateway, um, the IP scheme we're going to use, so our cameras and our MVR can be on that same network and we're able to view them through the network, and uh, DNS, so it's going to allow us to get out to the internet, which is uh, name resolution. So very important that you have a laptop. I can't emphasize how important it is by that. Um, and yeah, so now we can get the ball rolling. Now we have some information. So you have to, you have to make sure you write down this, these subnet masks. Yes, let me see the box. You want to know the IP address, the subnet mask, the gateway, 
and the DNS. Those are mandatory numbers that we're going to need throughout the install, not only during and at, but after as well. Yeah. So write them down. Okay, now you've got all that. Um, now you're ready to design your network. So first, before you pull out any hardware, you want to plan yeah, your installation, right? Yep. So you can see there, now that we have our IP, we know what network we're going to need. Now we need to find out some addresses. How are we going to address our cameras? So you want to write down, first of all, it's really important to make a, make a plan. Map out your install. Know where your cameras are going to go. Give those cameras numbers, IP addresses. So you logically know where they are as well as virtually. So it makes everything a whole lot easier. How do you determine where to start with assigning an IP address? So that's a good question. You want to know how many devices you have on that network. You might want to assign an IP to a camera that might be taken by another device. Um, so it's real important that you know the network. For first-time installers, there is a little bit that you're going to have to do in terms of research before you go ahead and start assigning IPs. Um, nowadays, IP systems are a lot easier, a lot more plug and play. You don't got to worry about that stuff. But on bigger scales, yeah, it's it's going to take a little bit of research, a little bit of do your homework a little bit. Well, cameras have a default IP address by the manufacturer, right? They do. And I'm going to go over how, exactly how to see that and how to change the IP um, on the cameras, which is also very important. Okay. Uh, but there's a couple ways to approach this insula uh, installation. Um, I'm going to go over that in a little bit. So now let's go on to this slide. So how do I make the connections? I mean, now that I have this information, I know the IPs. I mapped everything out. Um, there might be some obstacles in my way. How, how am I going to make the connections between these cameras and my NVR? Is it just all Cat5 runs? Is there existing cable anywhere? What do I need to do? What do I need to know? And how do I go about doing this? So as far as distance, what what do I need to worry about? So so this is this is where I physically want to install the camera. Yeah. Now we're down to the physical install. We know that. Data is going to run 300 feet over UTP cable. A little further for Cat 6, but for the most part, rule of thumb, 300 feet. Is that is that is that how far a PO, POE can yeah. transmit? Yeah, but well, that's data period on Cat 5. Okay. A data run is going to get you 300 feet. Now power, that's a different story. We're talking just data right now. Um, like we talked a little bit earlier about um, Ethernet power over coax. Maybe there's an existing coax that's in the wall that can help you get to that camera. Can we utilize it? So these are things you got to take into consideration when you know, planning your job out and running these, these cables. Um, also, you want to you want to plan this out uh, thinking about, well, there's two scenarios involved, right? So one would be a smaller system, what we call a, a small business type system. You're from one channel to 32 cameras. Yeah. Right? And a second scenario would be your uh, larger system, which is 32 channels and above. Yes. Um, and you want to decide where your what? head end is going to be and where your camera is going to be. Yeah, definitely. And this is real important in terms of selecting what devices you're going to need for the install. Uh, what accessories do I need and what outputs, inputs do I need on devices that I get. Okay, so some of the accessories that might get involved um, as far as the physical installation is concerned would be... So, for sure, we talked about every network is going to need a router or a switch. So we have a router or a switch. Typically, that's already going to be on site unless it's a fresh install. They have internet ready, they have a router. So your PoE switch, if you're not using a non- PoE NVR, so it means you have a separate PoE. There's some interface connections that you can have on your PoE switch that could come in handy. Let's talk about the larger scale. Um, fiber backbone. You want to make sure that there is a interface that's going to interface the fiber backbone into your switch. Because there has to be some way to communicate between those two interfaces. Um, I talked about some of the switches only having half the ports being PoE. Situations like that, PoE injector. And we're talking smaller scale, of course, smaller business, uh, eight cameras, or eight camera system, but they only have five cameras. And so you buy a four port PoE, you're not going to buy another 
whole POE switch, you can just buy an injector, plug it into your router, and you're in the same, you're, you're in good shape. So we talked about um, knowing what it is you're dealing with in terms of limitations of the cable you're using, limitations of the distances between the router and your cameras. So don't go, you know, install a camera 500 feet away knowing you're not going to get that far with regular uh, Cat5 cable. You're going to put yourself in a, in a bind. So make sure that you know what it is you're, um, you're installing. So IP systems, we know how far data can travel using Ethernet. Does power have the same restrictions? So that's very important. Um, we have installers go out, install POE uh, cameras on the switch. Like I just talked about, it going 500 feet, they're like, well, doesn't the POE provide power? It does. And we said data, 300 feet. But how far does that power go? That power. You start to lose the further you go. There are certain tools you can use. Uh, we have converters, step-down converters from 24 to 12, so you can use a 24 volt uh, power. Run it. What you need. The camera is only 12, so at the camera you can supply a 12 volt step-down. That'll work. We have a few examples on yeah. how to make all this work, right? Yeah. That is, if you're running cameras that are more than 300 feet. More than 300 feet. Yeah. Okay. So so, so one of the accessories that you talk about is the uh, 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 Ethernet over coax. Yeah. So here's here's Ethernet power over coax is not just for an existing uh, run that's already there of coax. You want to use that coax. Now, in terms of distance, this can come in handy because this will get you fifteen hundred feet out of a run and rather than 300. So you're looking at five times the length for using this device. Uh, there's situations where you have to have that camera down a long driveway or the other side of a warehouse. How are you going to get the data over there besides not adding another switch, something like that? This device here will not only inject power, it'll get you the 1,500 feet and it'll get your data all over one device. So this is this is something to keep in your, your back pocket. And it's very simple how it works. There's, there's a pair for every one you get. Camera end and recorder end? Yep. Cat 5, Cat 6. It's really important when you're using when you existing cable, you want to make sure that it's 75 ohm at least. Um, a lot of old, old installs, you want to use that existing coax and it's only like 50 ohms. You're not going to get uh, the distance that you want out of a, a 50 ohm coax. So it's real important. You want to make sure that that's it is what it needs to be. When are you going to need uh, an ether or a, when are you going to need a POE injector? So yeah, once again, the POE injector, eight camera system, but they only have five cameras, and you bought a four port POE switch. You know, you're not going to spend two three hundred dollars on another POE switch. You can just buy an injector for that one camera and plug that into your router. And it'll do the same. So of course that don't have built-in POE. Correct. Correct. And it's real simple how this works. It, this can now this can go directly to your router if if need be. It doesn't have to go through the switch. So your full ports are full on the switch. Um, you can go directly to the router directly. It's whatever network interface you're using. So that's pretty key. Ethernet over coax converters. So this is very similar to the power over Ethernet, only that this does not provide power. Um, very cost effective. Now, this is if you're using a coax cable, if you're upgrading an analog system. Correct. There's the accessory, right? Yep. There's a big difference though between the two. Is that so? You're going to treat this like if it was UTP. So you're going to only get 300 feet out of it, rather than the 1500, because there's no power going through. The device, so you got to treat this like regular UTP cable in terms of distance. So remember that. Well, those are accessories that you can, you got to use if you're running lengths that are further than what's recommended. Yeah. Or you want to use coax. You know, if there's um, 
additional steps that you have to do to make all this still work. Correct. But if you're running a ca your cameras at a reasonable distance when they're being on your feet, yeah, you can just um, run pretty much network cable from the camera to your switch. Your switch. And so. And if it's we talk about our scenarios about small system, uh, keep in mind. This sounds all. This all sounds complicated, but our, but our Ash, our NVRs have built-in POV, and they are plug-in play. Yeah, and that's so you won't need a switch. You won't need any of hardly any of the things that we've been talking about. You just plug it in and ready to go. So, yeah. but that's not always the case. Installers, you know that um, you get to the job site and there's always something customer wants something different, something out of the ordinary. So you need to know these things, have them in your back pocket. Know. That you have a solution to their problem when they come at you with them. Okay, so after you've actually installed the camera, um, physically wired them up, whether you're using accessories or not, um, to a switch that's connected to your network, what's next? So now you the physical part's done, and now it's the part that a lot of uh, installers, for some reason, are are intimidated by or don't want to deal with, and that's the actual programming of the cameras programming of the system. So hopefully we can help you guys out a little bit, show you that it's not as difficult as you guys might think it is, or as intimidating as you guys might think it is. So we'll go over some of the steps and how to go about doing some of these things. Okay, so what are we going to start with? So once again, very important, you need a computer and make sure that it's running the Windows OS. A lot of uh, people only have Mac. Uh, nowadays a lot more Things are Mac friendly, but you want to make sure it's Windows because you know that it is going to be Windows friendly. So it's just to be on the safe side, have a Windows laptop computer with you or at least one on site. And so once again, you're going to need the CMS, which is the software that comes with the MVR cameras, whatever. There's also going to be, in, and this is across the board, any manufacturer, you're going to have an IP search tool. There's got to be a way for you to find those cameras on the network and be able to change them in one place. So uh, this is a piece of software. This is software, and this will come with your camera or MBR, whatever it might be. It's always going to be a lot of installers throw that CD away, <laughs> and you know, it's thank God our website has our software. Some don't. Some it might be hard to get, and then you're in trouble. So save that software. Yeah. As a manufacturer, we send you that disc for a reason. <laughs> don't throw it away. <laughs> and in a web browser. And a web browser. Right. What what kind of web browser? Firefox. Internet Explorer. I think nowadays it's, it's a lot more friendly in terms of uh, Firefox and Chrome, not just Internet Explorer. Uh, those of you who've been doing CCTV for a while know that Internet Explorer was the only way to do it before. ActiveX was the only way to see the cameras. But now there's a lot more tools um, with the web designers and stuff like that that allow you to get to these uh, these cameras and NVRs through the web browser using any any platform, so it's getting more user friendly. So now we have our computer. We have the search tool installed in the computer. Yep. We have our camera now connected to the switch. Yep. So What's now, next? turn our computer on. We're going to open up our search tool. It's a very simple, light program. It's going to have a search button somewhere located on it. Uh, for ours, you can see it's in the top left. Once you hit that search button, no matter what the IP is. If the camera is on that network, it's going to come up, and you'll be able to see, or MVR, you'll be able to see its IP address currently, ports that it uses, um, its gateway, all its network information. Once you select it, you will be able to change any of that information that you set. So port, gateway, IP address. So as long as as long as the camera's on the network, it will automatically. We call auto sniff, right? Yes. You'll find it, allow you to change it, allow you to put it on the network you're currently on. Because the only way you're going to access any network device is if it is on the same network you are on. What if the camera is off site? So if it's off site, there's not too much you can do in terms of finding that IP address. You must know what that IP address is and you must do port forwarding. Now I'll go over port forwarding a little bit. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, a lot of people are. Really intimidated by a port forwarding, and it's really simple. It's not at all hard, um, and we'll go over that in a bit. Okay. Uh, we have a question. Uh, our own, 
our only blue light cameras on Viv. Ours are on Viv. I'd say most manufacturers offer some sort of on Viv compliant yeah. uh, camera line nowadays. Um, you have to make sure that you have the latest version um, of on Viv. Yeah. Make sure that if you're not using the same manufacturer for your cameras or recorder, that make sure they're compliant. Yes. So that's another question, and this, this next question answers well. I was going to say. So it gets really tricky with on Viv. Um, know the version. There's many versions. Know what you get from Onviv. So Onviv basically is going to ensure you that you get video to record and playback. Yeah, video mm -hmm. and playback. Yeah. All the other features you get with the cameras, it's not guaranteed you will get them. Right? Exactly. So that's why. What about motion detection? Motion detection, you're not guaranteed motion detection. Um, and that depends on the on the on the, the on -vif profile that the camera and recorder possess, right? Yes. So we are on -vif. What's our latest version now? They're trying to come out with a four. I don't know if it's released yet, and it's supposed to fix a lot of these things. But as of right now, across the board, everybody that is on -vif compliant should be at least two point four profile S. Yeah. Profile S. So you want to make sure that those things are uh, compatible with each other. So the new, the newer the version is, the more features it's more features. unlocked. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, will the search to only find blue light cameras, uh, or or most, or will it find another manufacturer's under compliant camera? So there, our search tool, and this is for every manufacturer, will only find that manufacturer's cameras. There is a Onviv tool that will find all Onviv cameras. That you can get from the Onviv website. Third party. Third party. And that will find all Onviv cameras and lets you do a couple other things that you might not want to mess around with. But so there is an Onviv tool out there that is uh, a search uh, friendly. Yeah, these are great questions. Yeah. And Onviv is a pretty good subject because it is. people see that differently. You know, you say it works, but it doesn't fully work. Um, it works <laughs> at some level. Yeah. And it's really easy to get fooled yeah. by, you know, oh, it's on Viv compliant. Just make sure you're you're getting the right version, and you know, there's a compatibility yeah. between the two yeah. manufacturers that you're yeah. using. And a more more important question would be: Is it in integrated rather than just on Viv compliant? You want to know if it's integrated fully. Yeah. Um, all right. So I've I've seen the camera on the search tool. So what's next? So now you see the cameras, you can change the IPs through the search tool. And so now that we earlier took the time to write down what IPs were available to us, now we can assign IPs to our cameras and put them on the network and add them to our NVR. How do we do that? How are we going to add cameras to the NVR? So first of all, one of the first things we need to do, once we have the IP address of our camera, we can now log into the camera's interface by itself using the IP that we changed it to and login credentials for the most part admin and admin are your default sometimes it's admin password or admin no password they vary but for the most part uh, admin admin will get you into the camera interface give you a live video and give you a few options um, every manufacturer is a little different but for the most part uh, configuration changes and things like that will be the same before we segue to the next um, part of this webinar, which is the analytics part of it, if you use an NBR with built-in PoE, it's plug and play, right? You plug the cameras yes. in, it will auto assign an IP address, yes, and it will start recording, yes, right? And you can uh, change your record settings from the NBR, yes, or the camera. Mm -hmm. However, for you to be able to access the built-in analytics, you have to be logged on to each camera, each camera, you can, so to make changes. Through the NBR. Uh, yeah, so it's a very important point you brought up, Ken, because you want to do the changes in the camera before you plug them into the NBR. The NBR will take control of the camera. Um, you want to do all your changes, any configuration changes, any adjustments, do it in the camera first. Some NBRs um, only do recording, and so all the other changes have to be done through the camera. Some do more than recording, some do the motion. So it really depends on on 
the model you buy, uh, different variations of, of product, things like that. But after you've set up, let's say, your analytics and is recording into the MBR, it's just uh, you leave it alone. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So that was logging into a camera. What about the NBR? So I want to log into an NBR. And we talked about there's a few ways to do it. There's a CMS, there's a browser. This is still on the on the browser, and this is what the NBR looks like. So very simple. You need the same login credentials, IP address. Once you get in, you'll see here that there's a camera section and also a network section. This is where you'll be able to add cameras to your NBR. You'll also be able to make network changes. Uh, ports. Uh, I missed talking about ports earlier. It's very important to know, as well as the IP address, you know the ports that you're working with. And I'll get into that when we do the port forwarding, because that's what's going to allow you to access your devices outside of your network. So when you, if, if you physically plug the cameras to the NVR, it will auto assign an IP address, and it's, it's going to register it on the NVR. Yes. But if you have cameras that are not on the MVR? On the MVR's actual built-in switches, then you have to add them here. You have to add them here, yeah. And so every manufacturer is a little different, and oddly saying they're the same. So you can do, some of them have a search tool that will automatically find any cameras on that network. Uh, we had a question earlier about what if it's OnViv compliant and it's a uh, certain manufacturer's MVR, is it going to find that camera? In this situation, yes, as long as it's on the same network as the MVR. You'll see it come up. That doesn't mean that it's going to work. It'll find the camera. If it's not OnViv compliant, it will not make that connection. So a couple things you got to, once again, a little more homework you got to do in terms of uh, compatibility and things like that. One scenario would be we have a 32 channel NVR, right? Yeah. This NVR can run 32 cameras, but it only has 16 channel PoE. Yes. So the back 60, the other 16 channels, you have to use a switch. You have to use a switch. And this is where you add, this is how you add them. This is how you add them. You can see this very simple. There's a plus uh, on the menu. You hit the plus. It's going to ask you for a very simple network address, port number, um, username, password. That's it. Very simple. Very easy. Um, very user friendly. So we have a couple uh, MVRs. Another MVR we have is a non POE MVR, which is strictly you need your own POE switch to get that going. How does that work? Is that any different than uh, a plug and play MVR? Not just ours, it could be any, any, any manufacturer, yeah. yeah. So here, you can see it's very similar to the last one. There's an area where you do a camera search and add cameras. Even though it's non POE switch, it still does an auto search and an auto camera sniff and it'll find them for you. So it's very simple. It's nothing to be intimidated by to have to add cameras and any of that stuff. The only difference is you assign your own IP here rather than the NVR do it for you. Basically that's it. Oh, we have a question. Can we remotely access the NVR and the program, the cameras through through it? Or do we need port forwarding set up for each camera in order to modify remotely? That's a good question. So Port forwarding does have to be done anytime any off-site configuration or access is going to be done. But you do not have to have every camera port forwarded if there's an NVR on site, as long as that NVR is on the same network as the cameras. For instance, um, you can see in the picture there that their subnet is 192.168.3. You can also see every camera listed on here is also has that same subnet. So I can this is actually our demo as well. So you can log in right now to that IP address and see these cameras online, even though they're not a 7.2 address because we're only accessing the MVR and the MVR is accessing the camera. So to answer your question, yes, you can do it remotely through the MVR without port forwarding done to the cameras. So the rest of our, for our viewers, what is, what, is my, what is the definition of port forwarding? So port forwarding, we talked about a firewall earlier. A firewall is a device that blocks access in and out of a network. Any router, any router is a firewall. So in order to get through that firewall, you need to have basically ports open. Think of it as a 
uh, a hole in a wall to get through. And that's what you do when you open up ports. You're opening up holes in that firewall to get in and out of the network. The simplest way I can put it. You need to let, it's like a gate. You need to let, yeah. you need to let the car in. You need to let it in, yep, or else nobody's getting in. Like another uh, way to manage or add a device will be our CMS. CMS is a very helpful tool, not only to you, to your customer. That's going to allow the customer to access the NVR or cameras not having to be at the actual MVR. They can be somewhere else within their network, within their house, within their store, and view the cameras or, or the device. Not only that, but they can do it off-site. It's going to be a very useful tool for installers because they can log into the camera or NVR remotely and do configuration changes and not have to have someone go off-site, waste time, um, going to the customer. You can do it all remotely. So that's pretty much it, right? I mean, you're now you're up and running. You're up and running. You have to, so your camera is already streaming. You have an assigned IP address for it. So you just set the record schedule, and you're and you're ready to go. But another thing about the about the CMS is you can also use it as a recorder. Uh, we don't recommend doing that unless you have a full dedicated computer with maybe one camera. Yeah, but it can be done. Maybe a backup you can use as a backup, um, remote recording, things like that. Ideally, you want local recording yeah. at the site yeah. and on uh, maybe a backup remote yeah. Uh, recording. Yeah, but it can be done. So just that's just a, a tip. You can see this this interface looks very similar to the web interface in terms of uh, with the plus the auto search tool, the networking looks very similar as the the um, browser did. Very simple to navigate through. Very straightforward. Very easy. Okay, so that's the first part of this. Um, pretty easy. Um, again, a couple ways. If you're dealing with a small system, go with an NVR with built-in PoE. We have them. If they're plug and play, literally just plug <laughs> the cameras, the it assigned an IP address, and you're you're done. Yeah. Um, for a larger system, then you have you you, you have to pick uh, PoE switches that's got a power for the cameras. You have to make sure your distances are right, and um, you know you have to assign or plan out and assign the correct you know IP addresses that are not taken uh, for okay. you to be able to see the cameras. Yep. Um, how many DVRs can support the C? How many D NVRs can you? So this is pretty. It's pretty pretty cool. Um, especially with our new our newest line that came out, the DVRs and NVRs you can have on the same CMS. So you can have as many as you want, as many, many as you want. So if you're an installer, you can have all your your installs on there, DVR or NVR. Or if you had a customer that needed both, you'd be able to do that with the CMS and have them both simultaneously be looked at. But it's gonna eat up maybe your RAM if there's too many cameras. Yeah, that, right? yeah. Like I said, it, it's it, it can be done, but it's recommended not to be recording and viewing all that stuff on one. So let's let's move on to IP analytics. Okay, so as, why 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 are you paying more money for IP cameras, right? So a couple of reasons. Number one, you're not you're you you are going to get the only way to get ultra high definition will be to go IP. Um, is your over coax now is up to two megapixel, I believe, 1080p. Uh, if you want to go further than that, or you want a four megapixel five, six, and so forth, you can only achieve that uh, using IP camera. Aside from resolution, there's also other features that you're paying for there that you may or may not know. One of them that's very underrated is built-in analytics in the actual cameras themselves. Each individual cameras um, have built-in analytics that you can use, that you can set up individually, and if you use them um, you're taking full advantage of the cameras and your customer and you guys will be benefiting from these analytics. Uh, for example, will be our cameras. There's uh, what four or five built-in analytics yeah. to each cameras. And we've had them in our new generation and the last generation of our IP cameras. Just people didn't use them or maybe not know about them. Yeah. yeah it yeah. could not be a bull eye camera either. It could yeah. be another manufacturer. So let's go over analytics. So what are the analytic packages that are typically available and how to access them and, and set them up. Okay. 
Okay, so let's go to the first one would be uh, presence filter. Yeah, so presence filter is, is lets you add a forbidden zone. Um, it's going to detect when an object or an individual uh, enters that zone that's defined, and it's going to give you an alarm or record, or you actually set what you want to happen when that um, it gets detected. You can set off an alarm, send you an email, start recording, record to another channel. There's many things you can do once that alarm is triggered. But so uh, presence filters one. So analytics are pretty much triggers. triggers. They will tell the recorder to record, or if you're integrated with an alarm device, tell the alarm device to go off, right? Yep. And how they work as a part of the picture, as a part of the video. Yes. Yes. Um, enter and exit. So enter and exit. It uh, detects the objects crossing and outside, outside and inside the line, or vice versa. So parking lots, um, exits and exits, entrances, retail no park stores. zones, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Tamper detection. So tamper detection is pretty, uh, pretty cool. If this camera, especially in outside, the reason why you have CCTV is because you're protecting something or you want to see something that's going on. So what's the first thing someone who's planned something going to do, they're going to go straight for the camera. Um, all the systems, people mess with the camera, you'll never know until the next day and you actually get there and see what's going on. This is going to give you an alarm, a trigger, like we talked about. If someone touches, moves, blocks, camera gets blurry, anything happens to that video, in any way you're going to get an alarm or a trigger. Dwell. Parking lots. Um, things that are loitering, right? Loitering, yep. Things that are staying too long somewhere they're not supposed to be. Some sort of break a car. Loitering, another way to put it. People just hanging out. They're not supposed to be there. Very important. Okay, appear and disappear. So appear and disappear. Um, this is for people going through doorways. Uh, nowadays, you see a lot of people uh, on the news stealing mail. The big mailboxes, you see them coming in and out of of uh, doorways, glass doorways, looking, someone's lookout, the other one's going in there, taking things. This is real important to have as a, as a tool in your, your toolbox. You go and you're trying to sell these systems and to know, you know, give the customer peace of mind. License plate recognition, this is not built-in feature, but. Yeah, it's, so it's a package that you can get on the MVRs, but this is very important. License plate recognition is pretty big, parking lots, um, Parking structures. Uh, this does a lot. It does a lot on the on the server side. It's not only the recognitions of the license plate, but it can do a lot of metadata um, on it as well. This yes. could be a whole webinar on its own. Yeah. So this this is a, a type of analytic that you have to pay for. Yeah. Using an enterprise level. Yes. So it's, this is more advanced. Yeah. Um, type of analytic. Yeah. People or vehicle counting. So this is this is. Huge uh, in different scenarios. You need to know how many people are coming in out of a place that needs people need to to pay. You know, you have revenue coming in. You want to make sure you're getting on that revenue. Not only that, um, schools, traffic areas. You know, this this can be a big um, selling point. Direction. So this, we have a lot of customers now um, that are government, freeways, um, things of that nature. So this is coming in handy, especially with us. Uh, a lot of our customers are, are wanting this to know, hey, something happens on the freeway or intersection, how can we be detected of this? This is a pretty cool feature. So we talk about what analytics are out there. Let's talk about what's built into, there's one more, stop. <laughs> Stopping is pretty self-explanatory. It's kind of like dwelling, a little different. Um, parking area, somewhere you're not supposed to park, this is a car park there, it's going to alert you. Okay, so we talk about analytics. So we, we showed you how to connect the cameras, how to access the cameras via a browser. So again, if you guys are a full wide IP camera user, the cameras have built-in analytics. Again, we're going to show you what they are, how to set them up, and what they do, what changes you can make um, to let them work for you.
Yes. So how do I get here? So I would need to log on to the camera. Log on to the camera it's the interface. This is our actually our H.265 yes. 4 megapixel line. Yes. And so you can see that not only does it do the analytics, the, this this is a um, stationary object. It has a lot of uh, bells and whistles that go with it, like email detection, um, alarm in and out, uh, record. I talked about what you want it to do when it detects. Is it going to send you an email? Is it going to start recording? Is it going to trigger an alarm? How long do you want it to record? How long do you want it to trigger that alarm? How long um, do you want a particular thing to happen? It allows you to do all these things rather than just motion detection. It's just going to send you a simple alarm. This gives you a lot more um, leeway with a certain. Okay. So, so how do you get here? You go to you go to the camera, and then you go to remote setting. Then you'll see a menu called intelligent. Yep. And then within there, you'll see your number one. So there's three built-in analytics: yes. perimeter intrusion, line crossing, stationary object. Yes. Again, these are all built-in. You don't have to pay a license for it. These are already in the camera. Um, so perimeter intrusion detection is pretty much so loitering, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if anything enters that set zone that you set, you get to set with your mouse. You just drag it across, similar to uh, the way you set up motion detection areas or um, areas that you don't want to see. You just drag your mouse across, and that's it. Very simple. So you can actually make changes and make uh, certain rules for this. So let's go over um, first menu switch, disable or enable, right? Yes. Well, latch time. What's latch time? So latch times, in terms of uh, if you have the buzzer set, how long it's going to set that buzzer, or how long it's going to do a certain something after it's detected. So whether that be um, a buzzer sound, whether it be record, whether it be whatever. So and, how long um, is the latch for? Okay, post recording. So post recording is the actual record time after the detection. So similar to latch. But this is the actual just record. Okay, sensitivity. Sensitivity. So sensitivity. Since it's a digital camera, um, sometimes digital. I guess what I would just say digital things may happen that aren't actually happening. Uh, pixels get moved because of the digital signal, and it's not an actual person going through. So you can set sensitivity. Mirages happen in heat um, that aren't really people going through there or objects going through. So you can set sensitivity to uh, adjust for that. And there's a scene adjustment. What, what does that mean? So same thing. Scene adjustment pretty much is going to allow you to adjust for mirages, adjust for lighting, adjust for uh, dark areas, things like that. They're going to help the detection process happen. So once you have um, set up your zone, so you pretty much draw the square, right? Yeah. And you can enable it to enable your uh, alarm. Yep. You can have it send you an email whenever somebody crosses your your zone. You can have the MVR record once it something enters a zone. Yep. And you can actually change your rules, right? So you can have it. Um, you can have an object going from one direction to yeah. the other. Correct. Or the other way around. Correct. So you can actually set up some sort of direction, uh, false direction trigger. Correct. And to know what we're talking about, you see the A B letters within the the set area, how do you want that trigger to happen? Is it from B to A, A to B? And you can see that the B, B to A, A to B uh, letters on the screen, you can set, you know, maybe you only want one way to be detected. It allows you to do that. So it is very useful for retail environments. Yes. Uh, anytime, anytime maybe you want to survey what kind of activity, you know, a, a section of that store is, is getting, you know. Yeah. Um, okay. Toys only, you know, stuff like that. Um, the next would be perimeter. So perimeter. Detection. Uh, I think I spoke a little bit earlier about perimeter detection with um, the server. Or is that the same thing? This kind of. Stationary object detection. Yeah. So I think the label is wrong. So stationary object detention is uh, a defined perimeter. If anything moves from that, an object. It's gonna it's gonna tell you. So if you have uh, I don't know. So if if somebody is not supposed to be in that area for ten seconds, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna send a trigger. Yep. And same same um same menus. Same menus. It's just a couple down. You can change the rules if you'd like. Yep. 
And then you have what we call tripwire, line crossing detection. So this is pretty much a line across the screen that you draw. Yeah. And the the key thing with the analytics, rather than it just being motion detection detecting, is the rule. You can set the rules. It's not just going to go off if someone walks through from the left to the right, from the front door to the back door. You know, you might allow that to happen, but if someone walks back in, then you'll get a trigger. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's different. It's different. You can set this uh, tripwire at an exit and entrance. Yes. For again retail. Yes. Pretty much any entry and any exit, you can have this setup where somebody is not supposed to enter um, door or yeah. entryway. Then it, at least you have the events recorded. Yep. And pretty important, you can only add one tripwire or one dedicated area to a camera. So you can have multiple tripwires on the same camera. So that's important to to know. If you want two tripwires, you're going to need two cameras there or or another software running the second tripwire. Okay, so that's going to be it. So those are the three built-in analytics specifically in the Bolight IP cameras. Uh, if you're using another manufacturer, check what they have in the camera. Most likely, if you're using an IP camera, it's got some sort of built-in analytic. Um, these are ours. <laughs> um, and that does it. So we went over how to plan out a network, um, your IP address for IP cameras, how to connect them, how to log on to the cameras, how to set them up for recording, um, the whole bit today. Um, that does it for our webinar. If you guys have any uh, further questions, um, feel free to keep typing on that uh, questions box. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Hopefully you guys learned something. Um, I found this topic interesting. Uh, this webinar is was also recorded, and we'll send you a copy of it to send or so you can uh, watch it again uh, whenever you like. Um, we have a uh, YouTube channel, Bolide Stack and Bolide Technology Group North America, and you'll find this webinar as well as our other monthly webinars and uh, video, short videos. Of tips, how to watch the CCTV, how to videos. Uh, visit us on our Facebook page, like our, our posts on there. We have a, a lot of pictures and events that we're doing, and also our website, www.bowlightcode.com. Uh, email us at my email or sales at bowlightcode.com for information on our newest IP solutions with built in analytics. And the rest of our, our uh, video surveillance lines. Again, I want to thank everybody, and hopefully, you guys join us for our next webinar. Thank you, guys.